Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt. This is Kuben Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. It's been a while. But delighted to be joined by Mr. John Fury. How are you, sir? Very well, Coogan. Yourself? Wonderful. Just Good to see you again in uh, fine fettle as well. Uh, oh, and by the way, congratulations on the new baby. Thank you. Uh, on its way in February, so... Well done. I've got it all. If I need any fatherly advice... Come to I me. I may come to you. I'm good at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, we've uh, just come back from the gym, yeah. uh, where Tyson's obviously... Yeah. Uh, not open the gym, but he has opened the gym, not open to the yeah. public, but um, obviously for himself and the boys mm -hmm. and your family. But um, yeah, it's a good setup in there. Listen, it's what Tyson needs. It's only around the corner. He can get regular workouts there. And like I say, he's got the main guy here, Sugar Hill. You know, he can only go from strength to strength doing what he's doing. How have you kind of seen his relationship with Sugar Hill develop over the last few months? Because obviously they had that seven month period, and then obviously we've been in this pandemic yeah. stage but Sugar Hill's over for a while well listen I only spoke to Sugar Hill briefly on the phone when he was in Vegas fighting Deontay Wilder last time on the build up to it but since uh, he's been here he's a character this man you know he's an happy sort of a bloke isn't he and uh, you can only get positive vibes off him and that's what Tyson needs plus he's a brilliant technician and a brilliant teacher as well I'm well impressed with him you know and Tyson can only do more and more with his assistants, you know, he's a great guy as well, lovely, lovely fella, he's been made welcome, he lives in Tyson's house, part of the family, you know, what more can you say about the fella, mm. good so, to have him. So you can see this as being a, a long term situation between oh, yeah. Sugar Hill and yeah, Tyson? Yeah, I've had a good look at the situation, you know, and obviously I've been around uh, boxing a long time, Coogan, and uh, the way I see this man work, he's so relaxed, and it's little things that make a big difference with uh, people like uh, Sugar Hill, you know, I'm just glad. Tyson made the choice to get him, him and Andy Lee. So, yeah, good move. Well, they say if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's so right. They uh, obviously were successful uh, yeah. back in February. So, yeah, the yeah. team worked well together. Mm. Obviously, we're not expecting the Lightning to strike twice for the same game plan. But you know what? There's many a trick up this man's sleeve like this Tyson. And he's only adding to his basket. He's not forgetting what took him to the world title. All the awkwardness, erky jerky style, what's needed. But he's just adding more to his artillery from this guy, you know what I'm saying? So he can't go wrong, you know. And people will see that next time he fights. Speaking to Sugar and Tyson earlier, it's, it's a little bit of a waiting game for a lot of people in boxing because we're not sure about crowds, etc. And we're kind of still waiting yeah. to see whether Tyson's fight with Wilder will go ahead this year. But in Tyson's head, he's focused... I know he gets mentioned amongst the Joshuas, etc., and all this, but yeah. he get, he's focused on Deontay Wilder uh, and and doing and finishing off that kind of yeah. saga, that trilogy. Whether it takes place or not, he'd be a fool to overlook the job in hand, and the job in hand is Deontay Wilder, and uh, we're training for Wilder. Forget about the rest of it; all that's pie in the sky. What's not pie in the sky is Deontay Wilder, and this time. He's going to do an even better job because I don't believe Deontay Wilder can bring any more to the table than what he's bringing. You know, he's still got the same team, you know, he's still got them around him, and I don't know what they can teach him, what they didn't teach him last time. All he's going to get this time, Deontay Wilder, is probably smashed to pieces a lot earlier and a lot sooner. But listen, there's more to it again. He'll see another game plan coming from Tyson, different to what he's in last time. So Wilder's not going to know what's hit him to be honest with you. It's a foolish, it's a mistake on his team's part, putting him straight back in. I would not have done that. If I was looking after Deontay Wilder, I would not have put him straight back in, in front of Tyson Fury, with a beating he got last time, because he got the worst beatdown a defending champion's ever had in history. I've never seen one as bad now, 50 odd years old. Never seen a beatdown like that from a defending champion, but he got it. And it takes time to come back from that. What I think, I would have done if I'd have been looking after him. I got him a couple more fights, a couple more tune-ups, got his confidence rebuilt, get him a couple of wins under his belt, and then put him back in and see what he could do. But to put him back in, it's like putting a beaten man back in to get him slaughtered again. Lamb to the slaughter. That's what I'm going to call this next fight. How does he beat your son? 
He can't. Unless Tyson goes to sleep on the job and walks into one. But he can't do that. Tyson's too switched on now. Tyson is a much better fighter now than he's ever been. And he's only going to get better. On come fight date, if it's on, on the 19th of December, you're going to see new stuff again. You know, techno notice what you're seeing on the internet, where he might look slow, he might look sluggish, he might look stiff. It's all part of the plan. What this man's bringing to his table. You know, so at the end of the day, yeah, I'm excited about it. One of Wilder's sparring partners only recently come out yeah. and said that Wilder had injured his bicep before the Tyson Fury fight. Shouldn't have fought then, should he? It's up to his team to say, you're injured, you can't fight. To be honest with you, it's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard from a professional sportsman. you got to beat down, swallow it, look at it, assess it, and know where you went wrong, and build on it, and work on where you, what mistakes you made. Until you accept what's happened to you, you what's what they call being in denial. You're not going to learn, no, you're not going to move on. You're just going to get another beat down through being silly. Because his ego is bigger than him. You know, shut up, mate, with all them daft, rubbish comments you come out with. It's absurd. It's a joke. I've never heard it from a professional sportsman, just making himself look bad. And the kid can fight, to be honest with you. He's a good fighter, good defending champion. You know, but he did get a bad beat down because he's corner. I'm blaming his team. You know, the only good man he's got is Mark Breland. The rest, they don't know what they're doing. They can't do because they wouldn't be putting him back in so soon after the beat down he got. That's all I'm saying on the matter. Mm. If they put him back in, they want sacking. End of that one. I mean, let's talk about how fighters do kind of react. And I suppose what we look for as fans is that fighters don't make excuses. Uh, no. Kind of like Dillian White from the Povetkin defeat. He lost. He wants to get straight back in there. Said he got, you know, he got clipped. He got uh, knocked out, etc. But all he wants to do is put that wrong right. But there wasn't there really any excuses from Dillian White on that part. Dillian White took it like a man. It can happen. What happened to Dillian White can happen to any heavyweight. It's heavyweight boxing. But you don't hear Dillian White coming up with a thousand excuses, do you? The man's a fighting man, he's a tough guy. He's a, he, he's a vet, he's a pro. He knows the fight game inside out. He walked into it, he, got, he was unlucky on the night. But, you know, he'll improve because he's not in denial. He's accepted where he went wrong. He's going to work on what, what mistakes he made and move on. And he will get the win. You know, but, you know, pff, Dillian White's a different man to Deontay Wilder. He's more of a man. You said after the fight that you, you felt bad and sorry for Dillian White and what happened, yeah. I did, because he'd been hanging around for so long, waiting for his shot. He should have had his shot years ago. You know what I'm saying? Never mind, months ago. And you know, you, you, you take these fights, you can overlook the job, you can be thinking about someone else, and bang, it's happened, it's heavyweight boxing. But again, you can learn from it. Well, you've, you can't, you've only got to focus on the job in hand. Focus on your man what's in front of you. Forget everything else. Forget the bullshit. Forget all the shit outside the room. Concentrate on your job. That's winning. John, Tyson believes that this is too soon, this rematch, for Dillian with Povetkin. He thinks that White should have some time off before going straight back in with him. Well, Is there an argument of that? Well, there is, because it's a confidence thing again, isn't it? When a man's been knocked out like Dillian White was knocked out in devastating style... It does take a bit of coming back from. But I don't see a problem, you know, because he's winning the fight comfortable. Mm. Everything was under control. It was working well. He was easing into it. It was going like I said it would go. But I said he could always pop the banger out the box. And he did. But I don't see a problem with getting back in straight away. Because he had it under control. He's winning the fight easy, wasn't he? Every time he connected, he was going down Povetkin. But Povetkin, wily old champion, clever, gutsy, bombs in that left hook. You know, you can only congratulate Pavekin. He done very, very well. And I've had some enjoyable nights with Alexander. You know, he'll upset anybody on his night if you're not watching what you're doing. Yeah, I mean... Exactly. David Price nearly had him out yeah. there. And then the same sort of thing happens. David caught David Price, bit, yeah. I rate David Price. David Price, I'd say, is the most dangerous heavyweight out there. If I was bringing a young heavyweight through, there's no way I'd be taking David Price on. The man can hit like a mule kicking. You know, and he's only got to catch you. And he proved it with Povetkin. He nearly turned him over. But David's been unlucky, I think, through his career. You know, because he's beaten Povetkin, got clipped. But that's power in heavyweight boxing. Mm. And Alexander Povetkin, he's famous for that, isn't he? Mm. You know, the man's a great fighter. Gold medalist. 
He's only ever lost to Joshua and Klitschko. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You can't write him off, can you? No. You know, he's a good, good. He's, he's a good man, is uh, Povetkin. So, but you expect White to win that rematch? Or? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. If they work on the mistakes, and uh, I think it was a more of a focus thing with Dillian White, mm. and I think the uh, the non-appearance of a crowd could have had something to do with it. These guys used to fight in front of lots of people, and all of a sudden you're in strange territory. All you can hear is a glove noise, and sometimes the crowd can lift you if you're losing. Mm. And that could have affected Dillian, I don't know. There's a lot of pointers, you know, it's nobody's fault, it's heavyweight boxing, but, you know, they're uncertain, dodgy times, aren't they? Mm. But I feel sorry for the kid, you know, because he's better than that. There was a lot of talk from Dillian about your son before that fight yeah. with Povetkin, but um, he's a, another professional fighter wanting to fight Tyson. There's surely nothing wrong in that. I know Tyson yeah. didn't kind of put the boot in after he lost. and No. You know... Listen, this is a professional sport, the professional people. And, you know, Dillian White's capable of giving anybody a good fight, even Tyson. You know, there's nothing wrong with anybody wanting to fight, is there? You know, the kid's got balls, he's been with them all, you know, and he is a danger man to anybody, is Dillian. And he will come again, and he will end up a world champion. And mm. I'll take a bet on that. Mm. He will get his chance, and he will win that kid. He just needs to focus a bit more. Mm. You know, but listen, if he could get it with Tyson, good luck to him. You know what I'm saying? If you can get it with Joshua again, good luck to the lad. Mm. It's about that, mate. Money. Of course. Um, I do want to kind of switch subjects now and talk about your boys. Yeah. Um, uh, Tommy, obviously, uh, yeah. is awaiting a date, which I understand is coming very soon for yep. Tommy. And uh, also, hopefully turning soon, uh, pro very soon, is your boy Roman. <laughs> <laughs> That's down to Tyson again, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, but listen... He's a big, strong lad. Yeah. He's game. You know, who knows what he can do? You know, just get him out, get him out of the blocks, isn't it? Why so late for him, though? He's him only 23, him. isn't he? Yeah. I, he's I, I never late. boxed for him. I never put a pair of gloves on until I was 23 year old. And I, I, I was like him, not one amateur fight. Mm. You know, so why can't he have a go? It's a fight game. Absolutely. You know, let him have a go. Why not? Um, where's the potential there with Roman? Or is it too well, listen, to he, say? He's an awkward South boy, can punch himself. He's got that achy jerky stuff. To look at him, you think, kid shouldn't be boxing. But wait till you get in front of him. He sparred different people. He spars Tommy all the time. He's a tough, tough kid. And I think, you know what, give him his chance. You know, and if he don't do it, he don't do it. But you never know. You never know. Give him his chance. And I do think he'll uh, he'll please a crowd or two anyway. Let's is, put it that way. Is he the last one of your boys that hasn't boxed yet, like professionally? My oldest son didn't oh, yeah. never box. John Boy hasn't John boxed. John Boy, yeah. Yeah. The rest of them, we've all fought. All the other five have, except him. He's the only one that's not uh, been broke in yet to the ring world. <laughs> be interesting to see his... Uh, he's a puncher, he's starts. awkward, he's got a great jab. You know, he moves well. You know, he's got a good engine, he's fit. You know, he can run six miles in something like 44 minutes, you know what I'm saying? That's quick for a big lad. Yeah. You know, he is a big fella, he's six foot three, he's 15 and a half stone. Yeah, he's lost a bit of weight as well. He has, he was 20 stone, so yeah. he's worked really oh, wow. hard. Yeah. He's 20 stone, Roman. <laughs> And now he's down to about 15 and a half or 15 free or something like that, I don't know. But listen, I'm looking forward to it. Mm. Um, and Tommy, I see obviously you're working with, with Tommy yeah. today, looking very strong, yeah. very powerful, hitting very, very hard. Sledgehammers, it, kids, he got in both hands. Yeah. I honestly see lightning striking twice there with Tommy. You know, people look at me and say, John, you don't know what you're talking about. But I do know what I'm talking about. And if my lads can't fight, they can't fight. I say they can't. But... All of my sons could have done big things. Even my Yui, you know, he was a short but he was an 18 stone man. I can punch like a horse kicking. But he got married. He went down another route. And I think he could have done bigger things than he did. But he lost interest. He went the other way, working away. Shane the same. You know, he was the only one, my Shane, who could give Tyson trouble in the sparring. Mm. And he's, there's nobody ever today give Tyson the same trouble in sparring as what Shane does. What any professional no. has come on. Really? No, wow, not yeah. one of them. I, I think not one today, before, yeah. not one today, because Shane, you know, he had ability, he could box, he could move, and he was a big, strong lad, you know, and he... Hey, he... Do you know why that is? Because it's called <laughs> familiarity <laughs> bridge contentment, and he knows everything I'm going to do before I fucking do it. Yeah, it's like looking in the mirror, mm. but my Shane, definitely, if he'd have took the job seriously, he could have done something himself. Yeah. Obviously, there's only one Tyson Fury and he's never going to be repeated or equaled. He's the best of the best, you know. But you know what? If Tommy 
does what I think he can do. There's a lot of world titles today. There's a lot of opportunities. Five world titles. Mm. In time to come, he's only 21. If he can't pick one of them up, I'll be surprised. Well, you're looking at him. You can see what he can do mm. like me. He's oozing with potential, isn't he? Mm. And he's a game kid. He's game. You look at the work I'm putting through tonight. Yeah, he absolutely. never shies away from no, that. No, he doesn't. And he yeah, doesn't drop his head. Just doesn't drop his head. Yeah, Whatever I give that kid to do, which is hard work, he does it without complaining. And that's what I like in a fighter. He's been in hard places before. Mm. You know, he's sparring six foot five heavyweights, 17 stone men when he was 15 year old. The kid's tough and he knows what it's like to get in there and be bashed about. You know, so this is what, this is the enjoyable part for Tommy. Mm. This next 12 or 18 months, two years enjoyable part. You know, so let's just see how he goes, eh? Any footage of uh, Shane and Tyson sparring? I don't know, because, you know, back on, in the on day... On Betamax? Back in the day, I never had nothing like that. Yeah. I had a, a Nokia phone. You, you still know. have. I've still got it. <laughs> and at the end of the day, all this Instagram thing, what I've got here now, Tyson controls it and runs it. Yeah. I don't bother. I, I can't even switch a phone on. I've got a 30-year-old flip phone. You know, I stick to that. I don't move out my lane at all. So we never videoed nothing. Mm. But I watched it. This is the my video yeah, in yeah, here. In your head, These yeah. are my eyes and this is my yeah. head and brain. That's the video I need and I know what I'm looking at. But they went down other routes. He said, Dad, I don't like the training. My Shane is I can't cope with the training. Training's too hard. Mm -hmm. And we've only got one champion. He was born to do it, Tyson. From the minute he opened his eyes, he was born to be a champion. You know, because he's the best heavyweight champion coming out of this country for a lot of years before and after. You know, so he was born to do all this. Um, just want your opinion on another fight that was announced yesterday between uh, Alexander Usyk and Derek Chisora. What do you think about that fight, John? Mistake on Chisora's part. Chisora, the opponents, he looks good again. His men coming to him, what old defeat. Usyk, to be honest with you, he's a superb technician, a superior one. He's a mover, he's a boxer, he's got all the tricks of the trade. Chisora don't fare well with them kind of people. He's seen that with Tyson in the second fight. You know, and um, Usek is somewhat similar to what Tyson does. Even though he's a smaller man, he's still a mover. And, you know, movers for Chisora are kryptonite. Uh, I don't know which way he's going with that, to be honest with you. He must be being paid well. You know, because if he wasn't, it's madness. Usek is a good fighter. You know, I would put him second to Tyson. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and if he was a proper heavyweight and not a cruiserweight, there'd be problems. But as he got heavyweight power, when it comes down to it... But this is going to tell man. us a little bit of this, isn't it? Against someone as seasoned as Chisora. To be honest with you, I didn't like him again, uh, Chaz Witherspoon. Mm. It was a poor night for him. And I'm thinking, Chaz Witherspoon, he's well past his sell-by date and he struggled with him over eight. Can he mix bodily strength with these, giant, these gigantic dinosaur heavyweights today? We'll see. But he can box. Mm. And boxing's all he need to do. But if he gets roughed up, roughed up, mauled, bashed about a bit, does he crumble? I don't think so. But there's always a chance of that happening. But, I mean, no disrespect to Witherspoon. This seems to be his first legitimate test at, at professional heavyweight. Not really, because I was expecting to blow Witherspoon away. Mm. With these credentials, amateur pedigree, and what they're expecting of him, I was expecting to blow him away. You know, but again, he's moving up from cruiserweight. And these are big heavyweights today. Tyson's fighting around about 19 and a half, 19, 10 on the night. You know, seven foot nearly. You know, you've got the Wilder, six foot seven. No, he's only like, but he punches like a six foot seven, 19 stone man. You've got AJ. The big units, aren't they? Big, strong men, and they all carry firepower. Can he take it? I don't know. But Derek, you know, I don't know. He's a big, strong lad. If you stand in front of him, Derek beats you. Mm. You know, show Derek a bit of movement, he struggles. But I'm not saying for one minute it's a foregone conclusion. You've seen that again, tack him, didn't you? Derek can pull out the equaliser, you know, but he just don't like movers. But I think Derek's one of the best heavyweights in the world still today, you know. John, I asked Tyson and, and Sugar this earlier on, what, what are your... Top six heavyweights in the world in order from one to six. Um, good question. I've not really looked on too much, you know, but uh, I'm going to go what I said. Tyson number one. Yeah. 
I fancy Usek at two, at two yeah. for skill. Yeah. Because he, he has got skill to burn. The only thing that lets him down is his size. Um, they both had the Usek at four, by the way. Yeah. I would have had John Tewar at three, but I think he's mentally damaged and I don't think he's ever going to be the same again. So I've got to say AJ. Okay. You know, but if Usek mix it with AJ, Usek gets knocked out. You can't mix it with AJ at that size. You've got to be a big man. But I'm only putting him in front of AJ on skill, mm. superior skill. You know, because Muhammad Ali was only like his size and he done a lot of things, didn't he? But yeah, I've got Tyson, Husek, yeah. Joshua. Joshua. You know, and uh, who else is there? Would you put Wilder in after Joshua or not? You'd have to, wouldn't you? You'd have to. But I'm only judging Deontay Wilder and what's happened to him because he got a bad beat down. And I don't see anybody coming back from that the way they're trying to do it. So I'm putting him, yeah, in. Just so you know, the other opponents yeah. that Tyson and, and Sugar picked, Tyson put Pulev at five, and then he put White Povetkin kind of around that six, seven mark. Like, no, but, no, no, no. I got Povetkin. I got... Uh, believe it or not, I know Dillian White's been beat only by Povetkin, but I've got him up in the top five. Okay. Dillian White there. He's there. He's deserves to be in the top five. Mm. You know, and um, taking another away from Pulev. But I don't think Pulev's got it with these big guys. You know, he's getting on a bit himself. Don't get me wrong, he can upset people because he's in that weight class and he's uh, up there, isn't he? But I've seen him, I've seen him box before and, he, you know, what? I don't think he can deal with these gigantic men, Pulev. You know, because what is he? He's not a massive, it was only 16 and a half stone himself, isn't he? Mm. These men's giants, aren't they? Look at them performing in there like, like like prehistoric times, aren't they? You know, <laughs> giants <laughs> is the word, isn't they? I look small. I'm a man 20 stone, six foot three. And I look small towards them. You know, so a man 15 stone. You've done a bit of weight as well, haven't you, John? Yeah, four stone. But I tell you what, they're only, they're only as big as Roman, aren't they? Who's six as big as Roman? Mm. If he's lucky. It's like this... Uh... Between the heavyweights and cruisers, I know they're talking about doing it, it's putting another division in between them because Lord. it might suit some of these smaller heavyweights who are really cruiserweights. But we'll see. Do you know if you happens. can fight Coogan? You can fight, can't you? Henry Cooper was only 13 stone three. You know, but if you had Henry's hammer, you knew you had to come off. You know what I'm saying? And I always say, I'm at 13 and a half, 14 stone. If he can bang and punch properly, he's got the power to knock anybody out. Mm. But there's punches and there's natural punches on this sort of like respectable punches, aren't they? But you get these lights out, man. Look at James Tony in middleweight. Mm. You wouldn't let him crack you on the jaw, would you? <laughs> hey? <laughs> so all his new weight divisions, it's all yeah, crap, man. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, if you're an heavyweight, you're an heavyweight, aren't you? But it's all about the money again, isn't it? They're bringing all these new weights out so people got more opportunities, aren't they? To earn more money. New, new belt, new, new sanctioning belt, fees. New sanctioning fee, it's all about the money. But think, if, if they can get it over the line, good luck to it. Mm. You know, I don't know. They're uh, half of them. They don't know what they're doing, do they? It's hard to keep up with it. Yeah, it is hard to keep up with it. The belt situation is ridiculous. John, 2021, do we see the fight that we all want to see in world boxing? Your son against Anthony Joshua. That is the fight we all want to see. Do we see that? That's the only fight I'm interested in, to be honest with you. I'd rather, bring, I'd rather him be fighting AJ next. We'd like it to be next. Because there's nothing out there to really interest us. He's already beat down on Wilder. This third fight with Wilder ain't really doing it for me. I ain't bothered if it happens or not. But what we want, and what the public want, the British public, is Tyson and AJ. Must happen. I don't know what's happening, because what I would have done, and I said, okay then, give them some step aside money. And I paid Pulev, and I paid Wilder. And then I'd have said, then I would have said, Wilder v Pulev. The winner of Wilder v Pulev will fight the winner of Tyson AJ. For all the belts. For all the it? belts. Yeah, yeah. For all the belts. You know, and then, then they're earning money. They've had free money. They've had money for fighting each other. And they get a chance at the biggest prize in sport, the undisputed championship of the world. So I'd have gone down that route. I'd have took my step aside money. Deontay Wilder and Pulev get it on. The winner fights the winner out of AJ and Tyson. You know, you're laughing all around, aren't you? And they're getting a double bite at the cherry, aren't they? 
You know, but I want Joshua, I want nothing else. Nothing. But it won't, it's not on our part. We ain't dragging our feet. You know, because I know Tyson can flatten him. He's a good fighter, he's a great fighter. AJ, you know, he's a big, fine specimen of man. I'm not talking about the man. I'm talking purely on boxing terms. He's a great fella. He's great for the sport. He's great for the country. He looks well. He's great for the advertising job. He's getting big, massive deals everywhere. You know, they're going to protect him, aren't they? Because they're earning that much money with him outside the ring. They can't afford to get him beat. But believe me, when he faces the Gypsy King, it's over for him. He knows it himself. And anybody who understands boxing knows it. Because there's nobody out there can compare to this man's strength, size and boxing ability and boxing IQ. He's got the brains to match everything else. You know, and, you know, scissors beat paper, don't it? And at the end of the day, AJ, if it wasn't for Tyson, he'd probably be champion a long time. But this man here, no. There's nobody out there. Unless you can get a six foot eight, 18 and a half stone Floyd Mayweather, them's the only kind of people that's going to give him problems. The heavy legged, the slow feeted, the one two left hook, and the technical boxing stuff, this man will kill you stone dead. It's not enough for him. That conventional boxing style, one two jab left hook, and a little bit of slow movement, this man will eat you alive. He's getting aggressive, he's getting stronger, he's in the pump of his life, and this man is like a machine. He thinks he can walk through a wall, and he's doing, isn't he? Anybody who can beat down Deontay Wilder like that, make him look like a schoolboy, like he didn't have a fight in his life, a weak meat champion, you've got to fear that man. Because honestly, before Tyson beat him to death like he did, you'd have fancied Deontay Wilder out any of them, including AJ, with a power. But let me tell you something, he's got a puncher's chance like the rest of them. No more than that. So just going back to... February, was it? We saw the footage of like BT put out yeah. of them filming you watch that, and we yeah. saw how emotional you obviously got. And they cut what that. Yeah. They, they, What's that? They cut and carved it to pieces. All that footage. Why? They had to do. Oh, because it was on top for them, wasn't it? I made them all look stupid, and they was there taking the piss out of me, weren't they? Let's be honest. I knew they was there looking at me like I didn't know what I was talking about, but I was laughing at them inside because I was the expert, and they were supposed to be the experts. And they made them all look stupid. You know, nothing personal. But I know the fight game better than what they do. Was it frustrating though, like not being able to kind of share that moment with him in, in person? We know with Tyson in person. Not really, no, because I've been in jail, ain't I? You know, at the end of the day, you accept stuff, don't you? And I'm good at ex good at accepting stuff. But the only thing that was bothering me, David A was riling me up, and I was gonna jump up and clout him. I was gonna jump up at one point, stick it straight on him. But I thought, do you want to end up back in prison? <laughs> No disrespect, David, but you're talking about my boy there, and I was right and you was wrong. But you did man up. He's a proper man, David E. Give him his due. He admitted he was wrong, so good on you, David. And all the, all, all the wrongs have been righted with that one sentence. He held his hands up. That takes a man to do that. Told your hands up. But all them there was taking the piss out of me that night. And I knew I was going to have the last laugh. Yeah, I know you've obviously, when you were in prison, you did... You were away for a lot of years. Yeah. Early fights. I just meant that one in particular was kind of say well, I say the moment of his career, but the, really the moment of his career was the Klitschko fight, I suppose. As well. Yeah, I was there for that one. Yeah, when you he, were there. When we he were, became we there. undisputed champion, well, well, he got all the belts, didn't he? Won it, mm. which we knew he'd do that. And once I know stuff, I seem to be right, don't I? You know, and I'm not a clairvoyant. I haven't got this crystal ball like people think we have because we're gypsies, you know what I'm saying? It's just common sense. You assess the job in hand, don't you? You look at the man. And I knew from the first fight, Deontay Wilder couldn't beat Tyson because any other heavyweight would have stopped Tyson on the night because he should not have been in the ring. Two warm-up fights. He's fighting for the uh, WBC title again, the most lethal puncher in boxing history. Come on. What was the most satisfying out of those two wins for you? The Klitschko and the Wilder second fight? Klitschko. Because I knew what was going to happen in Wilder too. I knew, but I didn't know what was going to happen in Klitschko. Because Klitschko was a good champion, wasn't he? You know, 10-year reigning champion, fought everybody, beat them all, inside and out, you know. And he was at the top of his game, wasn't he? But I knew the outcome were Wilder. I knew we could beat Wilder. It was common sense, you know. So all those pundits what think they know boxing, think again. <laughs> No oh, offence, yeah. lads, it was a great night, of enjoyed course, it all. Of course. Thanks, BT, for having me on the show as well. 
you know, it makes a great night, don't it? You definitely. Know, makes definitely. a great night. It's all fun and games, isn't it? With you not being, it's an absolute no-brainer to have you film you watching the fight. I mean, I, you know... Listen, it was good of them to, to give me my own room, plenty of food, plenty of fruit, and they kept me company, and the camera lads was funny and all. You know, uh, it was good night. Otherwise, would you just watch that at home on your own? Yeah. Yeah. I watched the first fight on my own. Yeah. No, I didn't. Tell a lie, no. I was at his uncle Othie's house. Okay. And me and him watched it together. Might yeah. as well be on my own, because he's in his own, wasn't I? I thought, look at this now, my lad's going to get brain damage. He shouldn't be in there. And I was half blaming myself on the night, thinking, how have you allowed this to happen? You know what I'm saying? Because I knew what was going to happen. Mm. Should not have been in the ring. He lost 10 stone as many months. He's weak as piss. And get and does what he does. But listen, it had to happen to bring us where we are today. Mm. Okay, John. Um, listen, I appreciate your time. Brilliant. Um, this, what's the day today? Thursday evening here in yeah. Morecambe. Yeah. Um, been a bit rainy. I think summer's officially over by the looks of it. So. Yeah. We've had a good summer, haven't we? Yeah. Apart from the lockdown, yeah. like... You know, it's not been too bad. I've enjoyed the old lockdown, tell you the truth. A bit of peace, wasn't it? A chance to recharge the batteries, see life as it is, you know, and just go forward with it all. You know, I just want to wish everybody a safe trip through this coronavirus and be sensible, mm -hmm. do what's right, wear your masks, don't forget the social distancing, you know, and just keep going forward with it all. Do as the government tell you. They're not government for nothing. Good luck to everybody out there and stay safe. Absolutely. Oh, and can I say a big up to the NHS as well? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so they're doing a great job because my mother's in hospital at the moment. They've done a great job looking after her. You know, they fetched her back round and she's looking well again. So big up to the NHS and thank them all very much. Couldn't live without them. God bless them all. Okay, I hope she's okay. Thank you. Um, John, have you got anything else you'd like to add? No, nope, that's it. I think I've covered every point, Anna, in a short time. Probably. <laughs> Probably. I know people's bored to death hear, hearing me talk and all that. Well, but listen, something you do for a while. So nah, well, listen, good. people get sick of you, though, don't they? You know, if you, if you have peaches and cream every day for a week, you're sick of it, aren't you? They think, oh, is that John Fury's on again? He's full of shit, him. Because nobody knows the truth anyway, do they? And if you don't know a man's history, you don't know him, do you? True, very true. And that's what happens. They don't know my history. They're only looking at me from since my son's been a world champion. But And they forgot about the other 40 odd years. You know what I'm saying? But I've lived a life. I know what I've lived. I know what I've done. You know, I don't regret one minute or one day of it. I'm moving forward like the rest of the world to bigger and better things. To Tyson becoming the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. And his name is Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King. Man of all men. Man of all nations. He is the man. He's my son. And I love him. Because <laughs> a father should. And be proud of your offspring. I love them all, my lads. Love every one of them. God bless us all. Thank you very much, John Fury. God bless you. God bless you. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt.